Hello, my name is Michael Sandoval, and welcome to another episode of Peers Over Beers. And I'm Chris Detzel. Nice to meet you, Chris Detzel, or see you again, rather. Cheers to you. Cheers. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny, we do these uh, podcasts kind of uh, several in a in a series, if you will. Yeah. And uh, the fun part is that you get us probably, or at least now in this this one, you get us now a few beers in, and <laughs> yeah, we'll, exactly. we'll see what the discussion comes into. <laughs> Before well, we, we do love in, beer, yeah. So we've, before we started in the discussion, we were having a pretty good uh, chat about, um, you know, uh, per, the, 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 what was it was called talking about the value of a community. But yeah. I don't want to go into that right now. Uh, I want to put that into a side conversation. But our last podcast was around uh, offline and online events. Yeah. Right. And I had mentioned that there were three basic. I would characterize them as three basic pieces. One was around. Trade shows. Yeah. Which we Anything, didn't talk about today. Right, right. right. Last we'll, time. we'll do that in a minute. Okay. Um, I'm calling them ad hoc events, and I'll describe what that means in a second. And then we spent an inordinate amount of time, or at least the entire podcast, around um, uh, user groups, right? Yeah. And that makes sense, especially like in a software type of environment. Of course. Um, and I feel we had a good discussion around there. Right, about user I groups agree. and how we use them. I call them, there were three tiers of the types of user groups from high investment to low investment. And, you know, we, we kind of went on uh, around that and how valuable they are because the more individuals who are in a user group may tend to be a more loyal customer. Mm. Um, I want to talk about these other two uh, types of offline events. Uh, one is around trade shows and the other one is around ad hoc, right? And, uh, the, the 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 easier one to talk about through first is around trade shows, right? So I remember, uh, and and I cannot take credit for this. I I, I give it all to uh, my my uh, my uh, I would say pretty no the guy who took over after me when I left uh, Texas Schmidt's uh, Blake, um, who developed a as part of the rewards and recognition program, he developed a way so that when customers. Uh, came to a trade show event, yep. they were individually recognized uh, for their contributions to the community. And so I had this thought... So before, so b- before you get that, Blake yep. Etheridge. Blake is Etheridge's his last Blake, name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Etheridge's so, last name. Yeah, Blake. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, I forgot to give him his last I'm name. I'm starting to get to know him and uh, super cool guy, by the way. Oh, great guy. But apart, from, apart from the fact that he has an encyclopedic me- um, brain around, <laughs> around um, movies... Um, and he hangs around with a bunch of stars, but it's a completely interesting life that he has. Uh, <laughs> but he, he does have, he had some amazing success over at uh, TI, um, with regards to getting customers activated through. So it's funny. I'll have to say this. Is I met him, uh, so I've met him through LinkedIn and kind of followed him through that. And uh. it's because of you who told me that I should link him in and uh, try yeah. to talk to him when he lived here in Dallas. I think now he lives in North Carolina, working yeah, at yeah, a, yeah. What, what's the company called? Do you remember? Or? Uh, Devada, I want to say. Yeah, they something own, like that. Uh, He's, several communities. He runs yeah. the community there. But yeah. um, uh, but I, I never got to know him until recently. And, and mm. so he invited me to this this uh, this event that he had. It was virtual. Mm. He's the coolest dude ever. I mean, super smart about stuff. I mean, yep. you were like, Chris, you have to get to know this guy. And so I did. Yep. Um, and so that's kind of... No, the backstory about him, right? Yeah, yeah, I know he's it. He, he truly is, uh, and and of course we share the same kind of football fandom. And I say football, I mean soccer. Um, <laughs> I was thinking Dallas Cowboys, but yeah, I guess not. no, no, not at all. <laughs> they um, do play tonight, so we'll see. What oh, they happens. do. I didn't even know that. Um, <laughs> that tells you how much I love American football. Um, uh, but but he created. So before I left, I kind of I kind of put into his head, hey, it would be really great if at somehow you would take some of the most. Um, Part, or the highest participating individuals are so let me back up a little bit and say that Texas has had an affinity conference so they had something called Texas uh, TI Developers Conference also oh. called TIDC okay and we had it once a year and we would have these you know badges of course and every conference has a badge but some of them have like I'm a speaker I'm a I've seen that yeah. a, 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 I'm a vendor you know the kind of little yeah. ribbons right and what did yours say well, I would have liked one that said, <laughs> you know, community, community member manager. or something like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. yeah, something around that. 
I, I don't know how it manifested itself, but I, there was, I said, hey, it would be great if we were able to create something visual that separated these individuals apart from the rest of the gang. Yeah. Right? So that people asked, how, wh- what is that? Or how'd you get that? Or what? Yeah. And it created some buzz about the community in, in the conference. Then you could create some sort of side events, a total different track, if you will. Of, Back up. So you did do this or you were just thinking it would be cool? No, I, I gave, I was giving him this kind of thought. I know he- You're giving went, Blake this. I, it, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Blake, before I leave here- No, no, no. Were you Blake's boss or no? Yes, I was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. So, um, uh, and, and I know he, this is where I would be good at, maybe we have a chance to interview him, but I know he did some of this stuff. We'll definitely have to interview him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he did some of this stuff because I know he would talk about his efforts around the trade trade shows and some of the affinity conferences and he would- highlight some of the high uh, participants. Hmm. He would visually identify them differently. He would give them, I think, T-shirts at one time. Uh, There was some budget around creating this kind of environment, and it worked. It it created this... um, uh, 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 Letting him speak through it, I think, is more valuable, but how he... How how the individual community members felt proud to be part of it, right? And I think that's what you want, right? You want to have your community members feel excited to be part of your community. Of course. So when I say trade show strategy, it's around how do I individually identify those people who are going to show up yep. and separate them and create a separate tract with them that makes them feel as if they're getting something special. So whether that's special access at a, at a trade show event to other yep. uh, type of um, uh, developers or product managers or strategy individuals within a company, uh, or even just getting them special things, right? They have a separate party that no one else has access to unless you're a community yeah. member, right? That kind of... I've seen that at that uh, kind of some of these events. So quickly, mm. when I was at Forrester Research, I yeah. used to be a um, senior advisor for enterprise architecture uh, councils or even the sourcing vendor management uh, right. council. I did that uh, uh, for a long time. And they did have special events, so it was the day before the Forrester event. Mm. And so what they would do is have case studies specifically around so like enterprise architecture kind of stuff. So you'd have members of that particular community present on specific things around enterprise architecture, for example. Mm. And so we'd have two or three different case studies that whole mm. entire day. Maybe we'd have an analyst come in and talk about, you know, the the 2020 kind of mm-hmm. view oh, yeah, of view what of, yeah. what enterprise architecture is going to look like and, mm. and those kinds of things. So mm. it was just special for them. Mm. Uh, and that would help those members of that particular um, uh, community mm. um, really get a lot of value from that. But then also uh, they would also get analyst special treatment because this, the analyst yep. would present specifically for them. Yep. Uh, and that was a big deal for them, right? Yep. So is that what kind of you're exactly talking about? Correct. Yeah, exactly okay. correct. That's a big deal for them, and I agree with you. Uh, I I just love the fact that you can give some of these members uh, tiered access, special access, backstage access that no one else has, privileged information that doesn't break the rules of the company. It just it's just privileged access. Yeah. And even when I say access, not just to information, but to people that makes being in the community worth it. It's kind of like this is so Def Leppard, uh, uh, Molly crew and poison are coming <laughs> to town in Dallas in June, July or whatever. I'd love to come go to that. Is that true? Uh, yeah, they are. Oh, okay. In July, I think. <laughs> and so how awesome would that be to get backstage passes yep. to anyways? Yeah, I, I digress, but uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm still debating whether, whether that, uh, if that would be. I'm an '80s guy, so yeah, I don't you know. know band, so. I, uh, I mean, you're you're '80s guy, but you like classical <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So, but I'm more of a Cure guy versus a. Ooh, Def I like Leopard Cure. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Cure, Cure. I don't think they're still around though. <laughs> oh, are you I'm, kidding? They were very much around. Really? Yes. We'll have to talk after this. I saw them. Uh, I saw them at uh, ACL this past year. Really? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. should have told me. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we um, digress a little bit. Right, right. Sorry. So, um. So I think creating something at trade show events is valuable, right? Yeah. Um, that makes sense. The other pieces around... Wait, wait, wait. When you say trade show, do you mean a specific event from that particular company? 
Yes. Okay. I do. Yeah. And so I put trade shows with Bucket under the same thing as um, affinity conferences. So if you have like a user conference. Yeah. Yeah. And I would consider that as well as trade shows as kind of that same bucket. Okay. Because I think of um, when I look at Imperva, for example, we mm. don't have a specific Imperva event, mm. but we do show up to like AWS and we have a big presence there and, mm. and, and other events. Um, and But you mean specifically that particular company's events, right? Oh, I would say that that was a that would be a good case if you had if you're going to an AWS event yeah and you had and you knew of a community member that was in that area that was mm. a really high member yeah I would say hey would love to set you up some time with so and so is going to be there would oh, you have yeah. some time with them uh, they would make their their schedule available to you right. so as a community manager I need to be make I need to make sure that I'm aware of that event number one two yep. is what's going on in that event and. Three is how do I connect my community members to maybe uh, uh, an expert within uh, Imperva or that particular company? Yep. In fact, um, in other companies I've worked with, we would have um, event planning sessions with uh, communications. So what we would do is we would meet um, twice a year and we would look at six months over time to see, hey, we're going to be at this event, this event, this event. Okay. And um, this is how we can integrate your piece, you know, and then we would have our responsibility, they would have their responsibility, and then that's how we would do it. So we would kind of use those moments of discussion points to, to plan out the year. Then the individual project managers that are working those shows would then say, hey, you're supposed to fill in this part of the show, and yep. that would how it would work. But it does take effort, right? This is the this is the part that's a little bit tough, right? So if you are a say a community manager that's a one man show at the moment, yep. that's hard, right? So you need to focus on getting activity in your community first. And so when I look at these kind of events, these are kind of secondary, tertiary things, right? This is get the community off and running, then focus on things like offline yeah, events. I think that um when I hear that so i agree with you i mean I, I think you really have to kind of number one figure out since we just opened up a month or two ago month month ago right you're probably not going to see who the super users are yet right, and right. that takes time but um i think the important piece is, is that even if you are a one-man show uh working with other teams within the organization that are the ones at so if it's somebody in marketing that runs the events team and mm. things like that so how do you get that person to get on board with your um, uh, thinking, right? So if if I needed community members, mm. if I knew community members was going to the AWS conference, um, and she was the or that person was the one uh, in marketing, kind of running kind of things. So I need to get in contact with her as community manager to right. see, you know, who's going to be there. You know, what are the people, and then maybe contact those kind of people and say, hey, look, I've five community managers that are community uh, members that are going to be there and then just try to connect them with some of those people from Perva. Does that make sense? It does. Um, Is that wrong or no, 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 no. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's so a, that, that way I'm not having to do everything. I'm just at least brokerage, brokeraging the uh, conversations or at least getting them in touch with people. I don't know. No, no, I agree. And, and if you have, it's one of those, like if you have time to do that, that's a great um, uh, value add. You to make those. time for that shit. Uh, amen. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't push back at that at all. <laughs> um, I agree. Um, There's n that, Michael. That that's the biggest thing is, yeah. is that you know people in my organization say, well, you know, I don't really have time for you right now, but uh, you know, maybe we'll make that a priority Q3 or Q4. Mm. Fuck that, dude. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Like, we need to make time now. These people are paying people. They, if you get them engaged and active into our experts and to other community members and to you know our product management yeah. or developers or whatever, yeah. these people are going to fucking spend more money. I they're agree. They're going to renew at a higher rate. Yes. And if you don't get them engaged, yep. then they're not going to fucking renew. Sing Hello. it, Chris. Sing Hello. it. Sing it. I agree. Seriously. Yes, yeah, seriously. Like, I agree. So that, to me, is the priority. You know what I mean? So- 
Yes. No, I, I agree. I, I was, <laughs> He's rolling his eyes. No, no, no it's, like, not, it's not an eye roll. Actually, I started to digest. Like, Oh, okay. That's uh, right. He digests. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> no, like, I agree. So, I, I, it, like, how do you, I, well, I I mean, if it's one of those, like, if I have an attribute, I would know. I, I think if I looked at it over holistically, I could probably figure it out. But, I mean, in some way, what you have to kind of think about is how do you, how do you get those individuals to believe? How do you mean do you, like internally or the, the customers? Internally. No, no. Okay. I think the customers, I agree so with you. I think yeah. with regards to customers, if they're using your product and they like your product, it doesn't take much effort to get them to love your product. Right. Mm. I think it's a very small Just um, go a little push. bit over the top. It's, right. That's all it is. And really it's like around that. experience, right? If you create a really good experience. Yeah. And what they're using your product that's already good. You create a good experience, and that yep. experience can mean anything to a company. Then all of a sudden, you've created a little bit more loyalty, and I think that edge is very small. Loyalty, I think I love that. And then internally, <laughs> internally, I think customers have. I mean, sorry, uh, employees are dealing with a lot of other things that are going on, not necessarily that's to their right. their very particular thing. There's some politics and some other things that are going on. But if they the truly believe, and everything yeah, else. Yep, yep, absolutely. But if you can remind them that the reason we're here is about the customer and that this is really good for them. The customer. The customer. Yes. Anyways, I'm serious. Oh, no, no, serious. Then I feel you have your advocates. Otherwise, they're there for themselves, and I I don't want to deal with those individuals. Hmm. Honestly, I really don't. That that, that, that adds another layer of of complexity I'm not going to deal with. Yeah. If if you will. In in my opinion. In my opinion. In his expert opinion, he's one, <laughs> Michael's one of the uh, best experts from a community management standpoint, and can really give a, a great uh, uh, overview of the strategies on you know online for sure, and, and as you can see, uh, the offline piece too. So, I appreciate it, my friend. I appreciate it too, man. Uh, this is really good. The the one thing I want to make yep. sure we close on is around this um, ad hoc stuff, right? So, oh. the the other I piece that was another podcast, but okay. No, no, no. I think we can do. I think we can do it in a few minutes. Okay. So the, the, the ad hoc stuff is around events that you create for your community that's specifically for your community. So, for example, hmm. um, let's just say that you have uh, an MVP. Again, I'm using the Microsoft uh, verbiage of MVP program. And you have once a year, you're going to have, um, let's just think crazy like Microsoft. You're going to fly in, hmm. expenses paid, the top person on your community to come meet uh, several product managers and individuals within the company. I wouldn't say, I don't know if the word wine and dine is the right way, but in a sense, you're giving gratitude to that individual of that time, right? You can create an event in which it's not just one, but maybe five individuals, right? Where you can kind of spend some money to kind of get those guys in. I say guys, it should be guys and girls, in to men or women, men and women, right? Coming in and having a little event, meeting with uh, product managers and individuals, they feel not just feel. I mean, truly are given specific access to content to individuals can create some buzz in the in, in the community. And by the way, the MVP program again, I'm using Microsoft as an example. This is a huge piece. This kind of being part of this uh, offline community. Uh, 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 I would call it um, um, benefit is yep. really what they look for because they want that access to uh, individuals. Um, anyway, I, I know, again, going back to Blake, I know he did something very similar. I would be curious to see how that kind of worked out, but I know that's one way you can meld the two offline and offline events. Uh, that's great. <laughs> this is, no, it's extremely helpful to me. No, it's good stuff. So. Uh, my, uh, I enjoy this stuff. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So thank you very much, Chris. And I think this ends another episode of Peers Over Beers. Thank you very much. This is Michael Sandoval. Chris Detzel. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.